All right, so today we're going to be talking about calibration curves. Why do we need a calibration curve? It's because when you inject a sample into an instrument like an HPLC, you see an absorbance, you don't know what it means. A calibration curve, it's a method by which you inject a known set of standards and you use that to compare against an unknown set of, of samples and then you can use the known set to extrapolate the values. Let's give you a real life example. Say I have a 100 ppm standard and a 200 ppm standard and they give you um, roughly like a thousand absorbance units and, and 2000 absorbance units. It, it could be whatever. It could be area, absorbance units, response units, Schmeckel units, doesn't matter. If we had 100 and 200 ppm for the standards and it corresponded to a thousand and 2000, absorbance units, if we had an unknown and the unknown was about 1500 absorbance units, we could be relatively confident that it's, a, it's about 150 ppm sample. Today, we're gonna be building our, our Cal Curve. So let's see here, we got some vitamins here. All right, so I would say the workable range for, for this vitamin, we want it to be about um, 100 ppm. So, so let's do a... Um, Let's do a five point cal curve. That's pretty strong. If our sample is uh, 100 ppm, we'd want to encompass the high point would be 200, 100, 50, 25, and 10. That, that sounds like a, like a pretty good cal curve to me. So how do we build a, a, a cal curve? The first thing we want to start with our NEAT standard. NEAT pretty much means pure. A pure sample would be a million parts per million. And you usually go to a stock solution. Our stock solution would probably be somewhere around 2000, 2000 ppm. And from there, it'll be really easy to dilute out to your 200 and 100 and blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about materials. What do we need to build a cow curb? Some neat standard. 100 mil volumetric flask. This is going to be for the stock solution. A bunch of 10 mil volumetric flasks. These are going to be for the individual calibration points. Transfer pipette, very handy. Smart spatula or dumb spatula, whatever you want. Weigh boats. Balance, pipette and pipette tip. So those are all the items that you're going to need. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh out roughly 200 migs of, of neat. If we go 200 migs into 100 mils, that give us your 2000 ppm stock solution, right? First, tear the, the, way, the way boat. Fancy. And that is paired. So we're gonna weigh out about a mig, 200 migs of this. All right. All right, and we need a little bit, a little bit too much, so we'll take some out. Let me just get rid of that. Shit. So that should be good. So that's about 200 mix. From there, we're gonna dump the need standard into a volumetric flask. That goes in. And then we're gonna top it off with water. Doing the calcar volumetrically, you can just trust the meniscus uh, because the density of water is one gram per mil, so it's gonna work. But if you were using another um, solvent, like say you were using methanol or something like that, you're gonna have to factor the density in. Let's go ahead and pop that off. So now we're just gonna vortex this and then we should have our 2000 ppm stock solution. So now that we have our stock solution, what I like to do is rather than trying to get a pipette in here, I like to take some of this out and put it in a, a simulation vial. So it's just easier to do the dilutions. And I'm gonna dump it in here. And I'm just gonna label this properly. From here, we're gonna do our dilution. So we're gonna do a tenfold dilution for the 200 ppm. So basically what we're gonna do is one mil of this into 10 mil for the 200, half a mil into 10 mil. So let's go ahead and get that done. So let's get a pipette. So let's do the first one. So let's get a pipette. 
And let's take one mil of this. And let's put it in here. And let's get a clean transfer pipette. And then let's top it off. All right, so let's just vortex this and then we're gonna have our first calibration point. And then let's do that for the rest. All right, so we finished the volumetric cal curve. I got my 200 ppm standard, 100 ppm standard, 50 ppm standard, 25 ppm standard, 10 ppm standard. So we're gonna get all of this into vials and then we're gonna inject it on the HPLC and then we'll see how we did. Um, so now that this is done, we also want to do it gravimetrically. What does that mean? That means we just weigh everything. To do the cal curve gravimetrically, we're going to weigh every step. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to tear the volumetric flask. Let's put that in there. Okay, so now that that's teared, we're going to add our stock solution in there. Again, it's one mil into 10 mils. So let's weigh the one mil first. Let's grab our one mil pipette. All right, let's grab our one mil pipette and let's take our one mil of stock solution. Let's get it in the volumetric and let's weigh this. And the next step, so let's record that and let's top it off. So when you do the cal curve gravimetrically, it doesn't necessarily need to be in a volumetric class. It could be in a centrifuge tube. It doesn't matter uh, because you're recording every step of the way. So let's try to finish off our cal curve and get everything into vials. We finished our two sets of cal curves. On this side, we have the gravimetrically done cal curve. And on this side, we have the volumetrically done cal curve. Let's compare them and see how they turned out. So we got them in the HPLC, we ran both, and as expected, the gravimetric way of doing the cal curve was more accurate. Both were pretty spot on. The R squared values for the volumetric was 998, and the R squared values for the gravimetric were 999, so a slightly better result there. Um, both are very accurate, but you know, if you spend a little bit more time to do things gravimetrically, you're gonna get a better result because you're just weighing every step of the way.